In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve for the specified variable in a formula. So let's say if we have the formula that describes the area of a trapezoid. It's 1 half b1 plus b2 times the height of the trapezoid. And in this example, our goal is to solve for b1. Feel free to pause the video and try it. So in order to solve for a variable, we need to get that variable on one side of the equation. It could be on the left side or on the right side. So I want to get b1 or keep it on the right side. So everything else, I need to move to the left side. So let's start with the 1 half. How can I get rid of the 1 half on the right side? To get rid of the fraction, I need to multiply it by the denominator, which is 2. But whatever I do to the right side, I have to do to the left side. 1 half times 2 is 1. So right now I have 2 times a, and that's equal to b1 plus b2 times h. Now the next thing that I need to get rid of is h. So notice that h is multiplied to b1 plus b2. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by h. So on the right side, h divided by h is 1. So I have 2a divided by h, and that's equal to b1 plus b2. Now, I need to get rid of b2. Notice that b1 and b2, they're separated by addition. And the opposite of addition is subtraction. So I've got to subtract both sides by b2. So 2a over h minus b2, that's equal to b1. And that's the answer. Here's another example. V is equal to IR. This is Ohm's law for circuits. Voltage is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. Solve for the current. Well, notice that the resistance is multiplied to the current. So therefore, we need to divide both sides by R. I probably should have done this one first. So V over R is equal to I, and that's it. It's a one-step problem. Let's try another example. The surface area of a rectangular prism, which is basically a box, it's 2 times the length of the prism times the width plus 2LH, where H is the height of the prism, plus 2WH. So in this example, we're going to solve for h. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of this term. I want to move it from the right side to the left side. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 2LW. So what I have now is SA, the surface area, minus 2 times the left times the width. And that's equal to 2LH plus 2WH. Now what do you think I need to do at this point? How can I get H by itself? Notice that H is found in both terms. When you see that, what you need to do is factor. Factor out the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 2H, but technically I really don't need to take out the GCF. All I gotta take out is H, because I want to get that by itself. So if I take away h from 2LH, I'm going to be left with 2L. And if I take away h from 2WH, I'm going to be left with 2W. And so this is what I now have. Now the last thing I need to do is simply divide by 2L plus 2W. And whatever you do to the right side, you must do to the left side in order for the equation to remain equal. So now I have the value of h. So the surface area minus 2LW divided by 2L plus 2W, that's equal to the height of the rectangular prism. And that's the answer. The area of a circle can be described by this equation. It's equal to pi r squared. And in this example, let's solve for r the radius of the circle. So to get r by itself, we need to divide both sides by pi. 
That's the first thing we should do. So a divided by pi is equal to r squared. Now, what do you think we need to do next? How can we get r by itself? To get rid of the square, you need to take the square root of both sides. The square root of r squared is r. And so that's equal to the square root of the area divided by pi. And that's how you can calculate the radius of a circle, or at least isolate the variable r. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. In this example, solve for r. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction, and that is by 3 over 4. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So on the right side, it completely cancels. So now I have 3 over 4 times v, and that's equal to pi r cubed. Now, I need to divide both sides by pi, but I don't want to write it like this way because I don't want to have 3 over 4 divided by pi. That just looks weird. Instead, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over pi. It's going to make life a lot easier. So notice that pi cancels on the right side. On the left, I can clearly see that I have 3v divided by 4 pi because both the 4 and the pi is on the top. And this is equal to r cubed. Now, the last thing I need to do is take the cube root of both sides. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. That will give me r. So r is equal to the cube root of 3v divided by 4 pi. So that's how you can solve for r. And that's the answer. This next equation gives us the total resistance, or the equivalent resistance, of two resistors connected in a parallel circuit. So in this example, our goal is to solve for R1. Go ahead and try it. Let me just put that on the bottom here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is clear away all fractions. So I'm going to multiply each fraction by the common denominator, which is R1, times r2 times rt. So 1 over rt times this. The rt's will cancel, leaving behind r1 times r2. Now 1 over r1 times this. The r1's will cancel, leaving behind r2 times rt. And then 1 over r2 times this, r2s will cancel, leaving behind r1 times rt. Now, my goal is to get r1 by itself. And there's two terms that contain it. I need these two terms to be on the same side so I can factor out r1. So I'm going to take this term, move it to that side. So I'm going to subtract both sides by r1 times rt. So I now have R1 times R2 minus R1 times RT, and that's equal to R2 times RT. Now let's factor out R1. So if we take out R1, R1, R2 divided by R1 is simply R2. Negative R1, RT divided by R1 is negative RT. And so that's going to give us this. Now let's divide both sides by R2 minus RT. And so we could cancel these two. And so now we have the desired formula. R1 is equal to R2 times RT divided by R2 minus RT. And that's the answer. Now the next equation tells us the electromotive force of a battery and is equal to the current flowing in the circuit times the load resistance plus the current flowing in the battery times the internal resistance of the battery. 
so the current flowing through the load resistance and through the internal resistor is the same. In this example, let's solve for the current I. So because it's found in both terms, we're going to factor out I on the right side. So we're going to get R plus little r. Now let's divide both sides by r plus little r. So these two will cancel and this will give us the answer. The current, it's going to be the electromotive force divided by the sum of the two resistors. And that's it. Now here's another problem. Let's say that A is equal to r divided by B minus C. Now this is just some random equation. There's no specific relationship or situation that applies to this particular equation. In this example, let's solve for B. So what do you think we need to do? How can we get B by itself when it's in the bottom of this fraction? What I recommend is to write A over 1 and cross multiply. So 1 times R is R. A times B minus C is this thing. Now we need to get rid of the A, so let's divide both sides by A. So what we now have is that R over A is equal to B minus C. And because we got rid of the A, we don't need the parentheses anymore. So now we need to get B by itself. So let's add C to both sides. So R divided by A plus C is equal to B. And that's all you need to do for this problem. Now let's jump into the next question. The geometric mean of two numbers, x and y, is the square root of the product of x and y. Let's solve for x in this example. To get rid of the square root, you need to take the square of both sides. So g squared is going to equal x times y. Now the last thing you need to do is divide both sides by y. So x is equal to g squared divided by y. And that's it. Now here's another equation. t is equal to t1 times t2 divided by t1 plus t2. This equation is associated with the working together problem. Let's say it takes John four hours to paint a room. And it takes Sally six hours to paint the same room. How long will it take them working together to paint the room. So T1 would be 4, T2 would be 6, capital T would represent the time it takes for both of them to complete the task working together. Now in this example, we're going to solve for T1. Go ahead and try it. Now if you have a fraction like this, sometimes it's best to put this over 1 and cross multiply. So 1 times t1, t2 is going to be t1, t2. And then capital T times t1 plus t2, it's just going to be that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute capital T to t1 plus t2. So capital T times t1 is going to be t, t1. And then we're going to have capital T times t2. So notice that I have t1 in both of these terms. So therefore, I need to move this to that side. Now let's subtract both sides by t, t1. So I have t1, t2, minus t, t1, and that's equal to t, t2. So now I can factor out t1. So I'm going to be left with t2 minus t, and that's equal to t times t2. So let's divide both sides by t2 minus t. So t1 is equal to t, t2, divided by t2 minus t. And that's how you can solve for it. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to solve a formula for a specified variable. Thanks for watching.